Hi folks, I'm Steve Butler. On today's show, we're making a project you've seen made a thousand times before. The only difference, no joiner, no planer, no problem. We're gonna make this shaker table here in the garage. All right, when we think of shaker, we think of simplicity, nice, delicate, clean lines. This table project has four nice, delicate, tapered legs. How we're gonna create the tapered leg is we're gonna make our own jig. I love recycling, repurposing. I'm gonna use some of my off cuts for my plywood scraps. I'm gonna take a couple of hold down clamps and that's what's gonna hold the leg in place. Um, all the woodworking catalogs, you can buy a commercial tape, tapered leg jig, which basically just helps you hold and cradle the leg. This is a hinge so that you can create any taper you want and it rides against the fence on the table saw. We're going to build our own, which is specific for this project. Um, I'm using off-the-shelf dimension lumber. This happens to be an inch and an eighth thick. So our legs are inch and an eighth thick at the top, and they taper down to three quarters of an inch. The beauty of it also is it keeps the price really, really low. I can get all four legs out of one piece of wood. This cost me a couple of bucks at the home center. So we're gonna start building our tapered leg jig. Real easy, again, just grab some of my off cuts in the scrap bin. Now, you don't want a thick piece of plywood for the base. So you want to keep this relatively thin. In this jig, it's half an inch. That's not so bad. You just have to be aware of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure the thickness of our board, which in this case is an inch and an eighth thick. And we draw a line, inch and an eighth. And let me just use this leg as a guide and show you what I'm talking about here. I literally drew the taper of the leg on my plywood board. And then I'm going to take another off cut of plywood and I'm going to glue and screw it on right where my line is and you can start to see what's happening there. Our taper is right there. Let's go over to the saw and start building it. Um, no planer, no joiner, no problem in order to make things, um, well-made things. Um, you don't need all the bells and whistles. You can buy lumber that's already dimensioned and maybe take a table saw or a saw and cut it to width, but you can use that thickness to create furniture. And uh, yeah, you don't need a jointer because it's already milled and flat and leveled. You don't need a planer because it's already thickness. Um, so therefore, no problem. You just need some way to make the joinery. Okay, we're at the table saw. I have my off-cut of plywood that we're going to use for the base of our jig. Right here. You want it wide enough to accommodate the handles of the jigs. It's really the most important thing to worry about right there. So we have a nice straight edge on our plywood. And I'm just going to set this up at around seven inches. So I'm just going to cut this down to have a parallel edge. I have my nice two straight edges. We have the base of our jig. Now the length of this board just happens to be about 37 inches long. What's important, you don't want it too short. You need it long enough to accommodate your leg length. Sounds pretty obvious, but it's, it's easy enough to cut it too short. And that'll come up against the side of the table saw and taper these legs beautifully. The idea came up out of necessity. You know, there was a time I downsized, moved, my shop got smaller, I didn't have a joiner, I didn't have a planer. Um, I still needed a creative outlet and I wanted to make quality furniture. I didn't want my product 
to diminish in any way in quality. And it doesn't have to. And I think a lot of people uh, worry about that. Oh, I don't have the best equipment and uh, I can't do that because of this or that. And you can. You know? All right, we have our two pieces of plywood for our jig. So I want to make sure that my top board doesn't overhang the base plate or else we're going to have to go back and trim it all and start all over. I'm going to take my combination square and butt it up against the baseboard. I'm going to hold that in place, draw a line at the back and right there. That shows placement of my top board right off the bat. I'm going to extend this line over, taking my square, draw a line. That is where I'm going to start measuring down the length of our leg. Taking this measure, this rule just to make the task a little easier. In this case, I know that it's 23 and 7 8 inches long. Okay, we've marked that down. Take my square. I want a leg that tapers down to three quarter of an inch at the very bottom. It goes from an, an inch and an eighth thick at the top and tapers down to three quarters of an inch. I just bring it up to the edge of my board, make a line. I'm going to cross these lines. There we go. You can see how that's starting to pan out. There's the start of our taper, inch and an eighth, going down to three quarters of an inch, 23 and 7 eighth inches long. Now it's very easy. You take my board, I place it on my reference mark that I made earlier, hold that on there, bring it till this edge is at the three quarters mark. And there you go. This board is longer than our leg, that's fine. It's not going to make any difference at all. Most importantly, the stop lock. We're going to put it right on our reference line. A little bit of glue. You don't want too much, you're only going to have to spend time cleaning it up. Lay that on there, hold it in place. I'm going to drill a couple of holes, pilot holes. Be careful, I don't want to go all the way through. If you're unsure, put a scrap piece of wood underneath everything. You know, it takes a little bit of time to make these, but it saves you a lot of time. If you were to do this project again, you have the jig. You just take it off the wall. I'm going to use 5 8 inch screws to attach this. You can use 3 quarters, just be careful you don't go all the way through. Now you can put a little spring clamp on here, hold it in place. Want to make sure it's at our reference line. Perfect. Now if you have any squeeze out of glue here, that's why you don't need a lot of glue, you have to clean that up right away. If it dries, it's going to affect the leg and where it butts up against there. You know, the premise of the show, you don't need all the bells and whistles. You don't need to break the bank on material. And uh, I don't know why people are so standoffish in feeling they need all the bells and whistles. I mean, 100, 200 years ago, you know, since the dawn of time, we've been producing furniture and, you know, without a table saw or a joiner or a planer. So, you know, you can do it quite easily too. You know, there's a lot of manufactured goods out there ready, ready just to be chopped to size and you know, tenons attached to them and make a table out of them. So, no different than what we've been doing for generations and generations. Okay, I have my leg stock. I'm going to divide this in two, 24 inches, draw my line. I'm doing this on the table saw. You could do it on the chop saw, miter saw. The saw blade is going to divide that pencil line. I have my two halves. I'm just going to take my board, put it up against my saw blade. I want to make sure my blade is higher than the thickness of my wood. You want the blade to be about the thickness of a pencil, a quarter of an inch higher than the thickness of the wood. This is right on. So, so we're going to set it up, split hairs, we're going to go right down the middle of that line. There we go. So now we're going to rip these boards down the center, get our four table leg parts.
There we have it. There's our four pieces cut, ready to go in our jig and start cutting. You know, we think of the Shakers as this utopian sect and it's all pure and I want to live that simple life. And yet they were the mothers of invention, literally. And then there was a list here of just some of the things they invented accredited to the Shakers. And it, it's pretty, pretty phenomenal. Just like the, the swivel tilt on the bottom of a chair, the early tilt back chair did that. The washing machine, the circular saw, the table saw was, was a sister Shaker and invented it, you know, just as we know it today. Just all sorts of things. All right, we have our jig, glue's dried. And we want to have a tapered leg, and we're going to have it taper on two sides. So we're going to make one cut, turn it over, make another cut, and we're going to have our tapered leg. Put our leg right up against our stop, clamp it down, make sure it's up against that fence. Now, my jig is seven inches wide. I've set my saw fence at seven inches. From the inside of the blade to the saw fence is seven inches. What I want to make sure is that my blade is high enough accommodating the plywood board and the leg. We want to raise it up high enough. There we go. Now you can see our handles are going to clear that fence. That's perfect. So now what I want to do is turn this over, clamp it back in place. I normally use the off cuts and use it as a clamp pad just because we have a taper here. Our clamp might not hold it down all the way. Okay, make sure that's up against our stop. I'm going to put this underneath our clamps just because we've created taper. I'm not putting it all the way over. I don't want it to cut into that. Press down, you can hear that snap in place. That's great. Beautiful, look at that. Nice, tapered leg. Tequila. All right, there we have it. Four tapered legs using our taper jig that we used with offcuts, plywood offcuts in our scrap bin. Perfect. Waterproof fabric. The flat broom. The shakers, the circular saw, the metal pen nib, the apple peeler. You know, self-acting cheese press, whatever that means. The wash mill, the chimney cap. I have this beautiful old pine tongue and groove floorboard that I'm going to use for the top. You know, it's recycling, reclaiming, it's beautiful. We just have to trim it, cut it to size, glue it up and leave it in the clamps for about an hour. Now I've measured 18 inches, which is the finished size for the top. I'm just going to cut it a little oversized. And uh, after it's glued up, we'll go ahead and trim it off square from there. There we have it. Before I glue it up, I'm going to trim off the tongue and the groove. So 
there we go. Our two fresh edges on the outside and our tongue and groove center, which will help our glue joint. You know, also let you know the history of these boards when it's a tabletop. Then it's a tongue and groove floorboard. It's going to look gorgeous against the fresh pine base. The top, um, I needed two pieces, so and they were nine inches each. So obviously, two together have 18 inches. So that dictated the size of my tabletop. Um, but I mean, it was thought out a little bit ahead of time. You know, there's, I, I didn't want a squat, sort of monolithic-looking table. So I, I, I searched for materials, and I had these boards, and and it worked perfectly. It was really nice. So. It was a, a happy coincidence. I was at the home center, found these pine boards. I've measured my length, 13 and 3 eighths for two of them in this case, and I've just drawn a line, and I've lined up that line with the kerf, the cut of the blade on our jig here, and I'm just gonna slide that along and cut it. What I'm gonna do is put a little line on the end of this to make sure that all the pieces are the same length, but because I'm only cutting two of them, this line works just fine. Just move this over to our line. And there we have it. Okay, I've taken off the sled and I've replaced it with the miter gauge. I want a 3 8 long tenon. Now you have to remember that the saw blade is an eighth of an inch thick. I've set my fence a quarter of an inch away from the outside of the blade. So of a quarter of an inch and an eighth inch of the blade, I get my tenon length. Put my apron stock up towards the fence that's the furthest most distance. I can't make a mistake. I want a 3 8 long tenon. Can't go past my fence. So I'll make one pass and all I have to do without even thinking much about it is just slide my board over and nip away at it until I cut that shoulder, turn my apron stock over, do the same thing. It's dead easy. All right, we've cut all our shoulders. If you're not comfortable nipping away at that after you make your first pass, you can just take a hand saw or go to the band saw if you have one and trim that. Again, this doesn't have to be exact. I like to make tables because they're more freeform. Um, you can be very experimental, freeform of tables. They don't have to fit into a certain area with close tolerances. You know, if you're out an eighth of an inch, so what? You're out an eighth of an inch. You know, you can really play with them, you can carve the top, you can do whatever. It just, it just allows for more freedom. They're a lot of fun to make. On the top of our legs, now if you remember when we were cutting our legs, we had one side up against the fence of our taper jig. Well, that's where I'm going to cut the mortises. And just for ease of cutting, I've marked on the leg 
where I want my mortises cut. And you can see that's where our, our tenons for our aprons are going to fit in. So I am going to cut the mortise dead center. And the first time making one of these tables, you just want to measure along the length of your tenon and then put either a piece of tape, a stop block, any reference mark that tells you where to stop your cut. In this case, I've drawn a line with my square right on my router fence. Now I've only raised the bit about a quarter of an inch. We're going to take two passes. So we're going to make one pass till I have my stop mark, flip it over, make another pass, put that away, and go for it. We're going to get rid of the chips after a while. Go. So I want to turn this on, let it come to a full start and we're going to cut our mortises. Look at that. We have a nice quarter inch mortise. Of course I have to take another pass to make it deep enough. So we're going to go ahead do the same thing on all the legs on both sides and then raise a bit and go for it. There we go. One pass, all our mortise is cut. I now just have to unplug the router, raise the bit to the depth we want, which is 3 eighths of an inch for our tenon length, and we're good to go. And it's, it's a great teaching tool. If I'm teaching somebody how to do woodworking, it has a lot of the joinery in woodworking in it. You know, the traditional mortise and tenon, you can peg the mortise and tenon. Um, tapered legs, per se, or turned legs. You can change a table instantly just by the style of legs you put on it. It's just a lot you can do with the table that makes it a great teaching tool. Our mortises are cut, our tenons are cut, we're ready to glue up. I just put a little glue in my dish here and I'm just gonna brush it on. Make sure you have a cloth with a little bit of water handy, everything you need just in case. So now, I'm just going to put this in. I want to make sure that's flush with the top and not below. And then there we go. Turn this over. If you have too much glue, you can see why it would be messy. My flat bench surface, I want to just give a little push. There we go. Take my clamp. Now this one I'm going to put directly on top. You want to make sure it's centered with your board, with your apron, so you get proper clamp pressure. Just tighten that up. Getting a little squeeze out. We're going to wait a few minutes, come back, and take that off. Take another clamp, and we're just going to clamp it up to bring in that bottom of that apron. There we go. All right, we had our two sides gluing in the clamp for about an hour. We took the clamps off. We then glued our other two aprons to the mortises in these legs. Let that sit in the clamps for about an hour. We now have our table base all glued up, ready to go. I had some off cuts in my scrap bin. This is just about a three quarter inch square piece of pine. Cut it up into four sections. Drilled a couple of holes and countersunk. And we're going to use that to attach our top. What I'm going to do is screw these cleats on. And you can see there's my countersink holes there and then on the other side. And I'm just going to put it just a hair below the top of our apron. And then we're going to screw into our top. What that'll do is make that nice and tight on that apron edge. 
What I normally do, take a couple of spring clamps. Just helps me hold it in place. You can see that. There we go. Just going to go around the perimeter, put the other ones on. Just get, lay your base on here, and we're just going to get a visual and try to make this even all around. I think that looks great. So we're just going to go around, screw our cleats into the top, get that secure. You know, it's, it's been really interesting because my work has definitely taken on this whole new um, sort of portfolio. It's just it's different work than you know, what it used to be. I never ever had to think about process. <clears throat> I had all the materials, I had all the best equipment um, to work with, and I, it was more about the design. You know, I just draw my sketchbook and worry about the end result, and then with the, when the economy tank, you don't have all those things, and now you have to think about process, and that's really become important. And actually, it's really refreshing. I really enjoy it, and that's the majority of my work now, and probably will be. All right. As usual, I had a lot of fun making this project. There's many ways and techniques to make objects. We just covered a few here. We covered basic mortise and tenon joinery. We learned how to taper legs. We made our taper leg jig. And if you're going to taper your legs the whole length of it, remember to do your mortises first while they're square. A simple little project. It's been done a thousand times. The difference is no joiner, no planer, no problem. If you have any questions or comment, please get in touch with me at stevebutlerfurniture.blogspot.com. I hope you come back, see what we're making next time here at the garage. from a really, really tiny dark place back here. <laughs>